So I want to thank Sherry for this spectacular picture. Uh, she just has a gift of just capturing nature and oceans and mountains and animals. And, and I just hope you enjoy. Notice, by the way, that these colors are not normally colors you would put together in the same thing, but God has a way of just mixing those colors beautifully. The red, orange, and uh, lavender, purples, they look quite lovely together. So thank you, Sherry, for your ministry to us. So we are going to go on this interesting journey. Uh, we're going to start with the, this lovely picture of a wedding with a bride and the groom in Revelation 19. And it's going to lead us into a discussion of the ten virgins. Uh, and I'm going to pick up part way into that story because we're trying to be careful with time. I'd like to begin with Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3 as our introductory text. Isaiah wrote, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. So this wedding metaphor is a way of teaching us about the celebration and the joy of the second coming. So let's jump right into Revelation 19 verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. So this is this coming great celebration. And I want you to understand about his wife has made herself ready because the church operates on a Holy Spirit economy. It's that Holy Spirit bestowed abundantly on the church that makes her lovely, beautiful, and makes her ready. And it's the church's cooperation with the Holy Spirit to make herself ready. So I'm just going to say this right now. You don't want to go around just criticizing the bride. Because I don't think the groom is going to take lightly to people who go around and say, you know, that church is just like awful, it's ugly, it's blah, 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 blah. I want you to think about the church as the bride of Christ. That should supersede your own opinions about it. Um, I know some people want to say, well, you know, that church and this church are going this way and that way. Take a deep breath before you utter those words. Uh, I think there's a certain level of risk involved in that. Look at uh, 19, uh, Revelation 19, verse 8. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Uh, isn't that a lovely picture of the church, clean and bright? That the gift of Christ's righteousness manifested in you dresses the bride of Christ, the church, in fine linen, clean and bright. That, that's just a beautiful illustration. In verse 9 of Revelation 19, Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, before we get into the ten virgins, I'm going to just read to you Zechariah 4, 1 uh, to 6. It says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty, you will succeed because of my spirit, though you are few and weak. And I'm going to cut that a little bit short. Uh, this is a story of how the word of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, lights the way to the wedding celebration. Now the question is, if you have ten virgins, ten young women, that's what a virgin means, that have lamps to show the way to the great reception of the wedding, then these are the ones who are leading people to be prepared for the return of Christ and welcoming Christ receiving his bride, the church. Are you ready? We're going to jump right into Matthew 25, verse 7. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. So there's two things that happen in trimming the lamp. First of all, you have new oil. Then the second part is you need fire of the ember. You light that torch, put it to the lamp, and here comes this beautiful light. Okay, that comes off this lamp filled with oil. That's the oil of the Holy Spirit. And it's in a bowl with a, you just make, take your finger in that clay bowl and lay it out. That wick lays right in that groove and you light that wick and that light illuminates the way to the wedding party. Now there's 10 of them, okay, pay attention, and we're going to talk just about five of them. Notice in verse 8, 
The foolish young women said to the prudent ones, give us some of your oil for our lamps are out. Now it says five foolish. Now in Greek that word foolish means silly. The five silly girls would not think ahead far enough to bring the extra oil of the Holy Spirit. Do you have an adequate measure of the Spirit of God? They thought they could borrow some, that it was a transferable commodity to them. They thought they were just fine with whatever amount they had. With that kind of thinking, the shortage is predictable because they did not know their true need of the full measure of the Spirit of God. The five silly girls are described in Ezekiel. Notice how he wrote this. Even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in its midst as I live, declares the Lord God, they could not deliver their son or their daughter. They could only deliver themselves by their righteousness. So what I'm trying to say is that when you receive the gift of Christ, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you can't give your gift to someone else. It cannot be given away. So when these five foolish virgins, young women, tried to talk to the others to give them their extra oil of the Holy Spirit, it wasn't a transferable commodity. Notice as we continue in Ezekiel 33 verses 31 and 32, you are very entertaining to them. Like someone who sings lovely songs with a beautiful voice or plays well on an instrument, they hear what you say but don't pay any attention to it. That's what it's like to be trying to proclaim an invitation to come to the wedding party without an adequate amount of the Holy Spirit. They just simply won't pay attention to it. They just won't hear you. No matter how lovely the music, no matter how beautiful the instrument, if you don't have that full measure of the Holy Spirit, you're just entertainment. It's interesting, isn't it? Continue on in that passage. So they come as though they are sincere. They sit before you listening, but they have no intentions of doing what I tell them to do, God says. They talk very sweetly about loving the Lord, but with their hearts they are loving their possessions, their money, the things of this world. The Holy Spirit sets you free from the love of those things so that you can receive a greater measure of the Spirit of God. The five virgins were filled with a shallow religion and they were happy with it. They were happy with that shallow religion. Now I just want you to think about that for a minute. Here's what they didn't know. First of all, they didn't know how to fully trust God. They trusted in their own opinions. They did not know how to look to Jesus. They were more concerned with being part of the party than being prepared themselves. They did not know how to have godly lives because they had limited the amount of the Spirit of God. They achieved a religious experience based on outward form, but they did not have the full indwelling presence of the Spirit of God. Now how are those five silly girls described today? I'm going to take you to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5. This is an extraordinary prophetic passage of Scripture. You don't often call Paul a prophet, but here Paul is speaking prophetically in the future. And I want you to listen to how he describes. Uh, some scholars would argue correctly that he is talking about the leadership of the church who are responsible in inspiring the church itself to go out and lead others to come to the wedding party. So he's talking about the leadership. Here's what he says. But mark this. There will be amazing or wonderful times in the last days. However, people will be lovers of themselves lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, continuing on the next slide without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good. Now what I want you to think about here, and, and we're going to go to this uh, next slide, uh, these are the leaders of the church without the full oil of the Holy Spirit. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing to do with them. I, I, I hate to even say this, but recently more and more pastors and ministers and church leaders are making headline news 
because of their inappropriate relationships, because they're preaching more about the politics than they are the Son of God. This is a prophetic picture of what it means to be one of those five foolish or virgins, those silly young women, those silly churches, if I could put it in that term, because prophetically a woman represents the church in Revelation and in, in prophecy. These are churches that have the form of godliness, but they're denying the power. Notice what Paul says, for that kind have nothing to do with them. Now, I am not writing this. I'm just simply telling you what Paul's prophetic statement is. This condition in the contemporary church exists because of a lack of the Holy Spirit. You see, the church is empowered by the Holy Spirit to grow us up into the men and women he called us to be. Not to be silly or foolish in our theology and our spirituality, but to be filled with the oil of gladness, the, the filling of Christ's grace and his mercy, mercy to the abundant level that it spills over into other people to encourage them and welcome them to come and celebrate the wedding. Going back to our story, verse 11 of Matthew 25. Later, the other versions also came saying, because the first five had already gone in, and these five are standing at the door, and they're banging on the door. Lord, Lord, open up for us, they're saying. But he answered them. Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. These are the most tragic words ever spoken in the universe. But think of those five kinds of churches that didn't have the abundant measure of the Holy Spirit. They were foolish in their approach and their worship of God. Just let the story settle in for just a moment. Without the Holy Spirit, we do not have a spiritual identity. That's why the king said he truly did not know you and it wouldn't let you into the wedding party. So what are we supposed to do while we wait? Listen to what Jesus said. Be on the alert then. Pay attention to everything that's going on for you do not know the day nor the hour. In other words, he's saying you just can't run out at the last minute there and get a little extra measure of the Holy Spirit. You need to have that every day now and be ready in the moment now. Listen to how abundant the gospel tells you that the Spirit is available. The abundant availability of the Holy Spirit, Revelation 22, 17. The Spirit and the bride say to everyone on the earth, let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Now before we close, I want you to just pause for just a moment because we've looked at some intense passages. Really serious ones. I, I just want you to take a moment and say, are you and God are really on a good communication right now? Are you paying attention to the promptings and leadings of the Holy Spirit? Are you asking for a greater measure? Because we want to see you at the wedding party. Blessings. Take care. Enjoy. Our last picture. This is a wild burrow on the coast of California, just walking out of the woods there, just totally not a care in the world. He's just coming along, just enjoying life, not intimidated by us in any way. Uh, and again, Sherry just has a way of capturing those moments in time. And Sherry, thank you again for that uh, lovely picture. Blessings. I hope you have a really blessed week. Take care now.